Hello and welcome to this video on uh, Emacs. Uh, today I'm going to look at Flycheck. Uh, this is a syntax checker for Emacs. Um, it's an extension. Well, it's a it's a it's a replacement for FlyMake, which used to be part of Emacs proper. Uh, this is a prerequisite for the next video that I'm going to do, which is about my JavaScript setup, my Emacs JavaScript setups to use Emacs like a JavaScript IDE. Um, last video i did company mode which is also a prerequisite and company mode is a completion uh library or completion framework so anyway fly check um it supports 40 different programming languages there's a list of them here actually see the list of them here side uh quite a few um i am going to be focusing on javascript today because that's going to be the focus of the next video, but you can come to this this uh, web page and, and see which languages are available and the language of your choice will be there. Um, I, I'm i going to use ESLint. I'm going to use the ESLint version. Um, it's worth noting that the way uh, Flycheck works is it depends on third-party um, programs being installed on your path. Uh, so for example, for ESLint, ESLint needs installing on my path, so I have to npm install ESLint globally. So basically, you need to. You'll know for the language that you're using, um, you know what what the tools are, or you can, or you can look it up and figure out how they work. Um, but FlyCheck basically, on certain modes loading, so on like web mode loading or JavaScript mode loading, in this case, it will see that it's javascript and it will try and load the javascript flycheck um, engine it will check certain things check the configuration check that it can get to the eslint in the path and if it can then it'll run uh, and i'll show show that working so if i just um hold on i want to go on emacs that's what i want to go on so i kind of just show it now um i guess well i'll, sh I'll show what it what happens if you don't have it so if we go on projects, we go app.js, go in here, you can see I can do const test is test, and then I can say test equals testing. And that is in JavaScript, that's not valid because I've defined a constant and then I've tried to redeclare that variable. Uh, <clears throat> that's not allowed. So if we um, go to our bookmarks, emacs con conif, we will install flycheck so we'll do it after company that's fine uh fly check again thanks to everyone for the shortcut so oh, let's make this so use package flycheck again we're going to use malpa it's available on malpa um, we can ensure it's installed initialize and as you can see, because we've got company um, installed now, we're now getting all of these kind of suggestions as we type, which is lovely. So we can do global fly check mode. So that'll, like we did with company, that'll start fly check um, for every single buffer. And because of the way fly check works, as I mentioned, when you load a buffer, depending on the mode that loads, it will try and load the uh, syntax checking for that buffer. As you load it so having global fly check mode is kind of well so far I've, I've had no problems and i edit org files and things like that so with that done let's execute that and then if we go back to let's just kill it and go to it again um, app .j. Then, as you can see we've got these errors coming up here hover over it you'll see in the mini buffer test is assigned a value but never used which is a valid error and um, test is constant so there you go so that's obviously working but if you really wanted to check you can you can run the command fly check verify setup you'll get this little report here so you know first checker to run javascript eslint um, can it be enabled? Yeah, it can. The executable, it found the executable for ESLint, which I installed with npm globally, and the configuration file found. 
So I believe, so I, could, I don't currently have a configuration for, um, for ESLint in this project, I don't think. So let's just have a look. So there's no ESLint there. There's no ESLint there. There's no ESLint there. So it must be using my global ESLint RC. So it must be using this file. Um, which is handy. It's quite nice that it uses the global if it's there because with ESLint and some other um, with some other languages, um, you need a valid configuration for it to work, uh, which was noted here. So it automatically disables the checker if the ESLint cannot find a valid configuration for the current buffer. And the way that ESLint works, and I'm sure many other languages work, is it looks in the project first, and if not, it looks in your home directory. So this is what it's doing. Um, that's pretty much it, really. As you can see, it gives you these errors, um, and it's yeah, massively useful to get errors. Um, and if we go back to here and we do something, well, let's let's just open in here. If we go, well, you can see that it's already checking in here. Should have a section marked code commentary. So this is all e-list kind of stuff because this is opening in a this bottom buffer here is opening up in its own kind of buffer the emacs linter is suggesting that we um um yeah because it's opening in its own kind of uh buffer here it's it's the emacs the, the emacs way is if you define something or you do you make a file that you should add comments at the top that define you know what's in that file uh, and what that package is but because we're compiling it down within here i will get those error messages when i open it in that special second buffer but within here i don't get those errors because they're within code blocks so that just kind of explains that um that's pretty much it there's not much more else to say fly check is really powerful you need underlying things underlying um programs and configurations set up but for your programming language um but you know if it's your programming language then you know you know what you need and your normal workflow. It's just setting it up with those things. Um, that's about it. So like I said, in the next video, the next Emacs video, I'm going to look at JavaScript development and kind of my setup uh, using RJSX mode, Tide, Prettier. I think that's it. Um, let's just, yeah. RJSX mode, Tide, Prettier, Flycheck and Company. So all of these things together, um, make quite a powerful id jump to definitions things like that I'll, I'll show you that next time um thanks for watching like and subscribe follow and tip if you're on library um all of these things really help the channel and help me leave a comment below if you have any ideas for anything or if you want to see anything or if i've missed anything or you want me to go into more detail about anything uh, i try and reply to all the comments that i receive uh, because i i really value people's input and their comments and as you can see, if you've watched any of my other videos in the past, I do try and take on board what people say um, and, you know, kind of show that to, to the community as well. Um, so, yeah, that's it for now. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Stop.